Right, joining me live here in the studio, my political panel, Liberal Senator Andrew Bragg and the Labor Party, Matt Thistlethwaite. Gentlemen, thanks both for your time. The Biloela family. Interesting sort of, well, it's a kicking of the can down the road, really, but if Tharnaka hadn't become ill, none of this would be happening, would it? Well, I think the judgment that's been made is the appropriate judgment. Um, the family will be able to be reunited in Australia uh, whilst they make any additional claims uh, for asylum. Now, I remind you at this point that uh, all the, the courts of Australia have so far rejected any uh, claim the family has, have made to mm. having refugee status. But she'll be staying here beyond her treatment. So this was not based on a policy decision. This was based on political pressure on the, on the government right well, there's now. there's obviously clear. a young girl who's very unwell, and I think everyone, regardless of your position, feels very strongly about that. And so the judgement today has been to make the family united mm. for this period, and then they may wish to make further applications. Were you speaking up for the government to, to have a heart on this? Well, I mean, we do have a heart, and that's why we have a large um, humanitarian mm, but on this program. Matter. Well, Tom, we know what works. We know what hasn't worked over the last 20 years in Australia. Uh, we need to have an orderly process. Right, but that's not answering the question. I'm answering the question. I don't think that you can throw a system that works in the bin. I think you need to stick to mm. the plans that work um, and you make uh, judgments... Uh, like these, if you need to. What's your view on what's happening today, Matt? Well, I think it's uh, common sense. We're getting towards uh, a situation where the family can live in the in the community. Um, I think that uh, the family should be granted a permanent visa. Um, the minister has a discretion to do that under the Migration Act. Um, and one of the factors that the minister looks into is the family or the individual's contribution to Australian society and the local community mm. and the rights of, of children. Now, in Biloela, uh, where this family have been living, uh, they've been contributing to the community. And if you look at the father, he was working at the meatworks in Biloela where they've got a skill shortage. They can't get enough workers. Um, and this bloke's willing to work there and base his family there, contribute to the community. The community want them. The Minister's got a discretion under the uh, legislation. I think that the Minister should exercise that discretion, as they do on hundreds of occasions every month. The, and if that happens, there'll be people who have been found to be refugees in Australia wondering when their exemption's coming. Well, the, the, the Minister has that discretion. Um, this isn't going to set a precedent because the way that section of the Migration Act works is it doesn't set a precedent. The, the ultimate discretion is with the minister. But it might um, and the minister. A new trend. If, if, they, if you then go through all the other people in Australia, be, surely there'd be other worthy people that should be staying here as well. So what about them? Well, and they can have theirs assessed under the same provisions in the Act. Um, the minister has the discretion and it doesn't set a precedent. But and, will Labor, will Labor and, be seeking to highlight all the other people in this situation who have been found to be refugees that well, should be resettled? The, the minister um, looks at these cases... Uh, on a regular basis. So, you know, most people wouldn't understand that, that a minister will look at hundreds of these a month um, in a normal circumstance when we don't have the borders locked with COVID. Um, and the minister uses the guidelines that are set in place um, and they look at things like contribution to Australian society, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, and then they make a decision. It's just right. that this one happens to be in the media a fair bit. Yes, well, that, that, that is, it's, it's garnered that, attention. That is true. Mm. So just finally on this when you said this is the policy it works. The set yep. policy is people that arrived after a certain date in 2013 will never be resettled. They arrived before that date. Mm. So why couldn't they be resettled earlier? They're, they're not refugees. They haven't been found to be so far. Well, you have my answer. I mean, they're, they're not refugees. No court has found them to be refugees. So uh, there are people that are refugees who are waiting to be resettled. Do, do you think so there'd be a risk of persecution system. if they went back as Tamils to Sri Lanka? We have this system mm. where we resettle people who are refugees. But is it true there that... There are lots that... of people who are worthy, as you've just yeah. highlighted. But, but they've, also, they've also changed the procedure for the way this happens in the courts. So there's an initial interview and then the courts assess the procedural element. They don't delve into the refugees. Well, I'm not the court. Ones. I'm telling you as a policymaker what, what yeah. the policy should be and what it is. And the policy is we have an orderly border, border protection program mm. where we allow refugees to be resettled in Australia... And uh, these people are not refugees. Does, do you think the process of so far, assessing right? the refugees... There, there may be a further Do you think the process case. of assessing the refugees working seamlessly? Well, we, we, make, we make the laws. The courts 
make the judgments. Mm. But the courts at the moment, from my understanding, assess the process. Well, have they advised that there are problems with the process? No, but the process is pretty straightforward and it's set by the government. So the point is, perhaps you need to go beyond an initial interview um, and have something where you go, well, things have changed since then and this is what happens to some Tamils when they return to Sri Lanka. Well, I think you, you could look at that matter, right? I mean, you'd expect that the courts would consider that in their review. I don't know if they can, though. That's the issue. Right. Well, I'm happy to have a look at that. All right. Um, Superannuation so changes. Where does Labor sit on this? We had Rex Patrick on the show that has a, a few changes and then he wants the government to agree. Will, will Labor still agree to some changes on this? Will you vote for superannuation reform, albeit with some carve-outs? Yeah, I think that there does need to be change in this bill. Um, we've got deep concerns uh, about the issue of stapling people to particular funds, um, particularly where they work in a dangerous industry. So say someone starts, uh, while they're at school, working in retail, they get stapled to a retail fund, then they finish school, go and start their apprenticeship, work as a bricklayer, plumber, electrician, uh, and start working in that industry. The appropriate fund for them would be one that has the life insurance that covers people that work in that dangerous industry. But they may be stapled to that earlier fund for the rest of their working career. And that's not a, not a good outcome. And that's why workers have been saying, we've got concerns about this and we want this changed. The other interesting element of this is paying fines for sort of mis financial misconduct. Industry super won't be able to pay out of members' money. Um, they might be able to use a levy, but that would go against them in terms of the assessment of their fees for-profit funds can use shareholder capital. Is that an advantage for for-profit for funds? But, like, you can hear all the lines from, from Matt about why people don't want to have reform. I mean, the super funds don't want to see any changes because, at the moment, they're collecting, you know, $30 billion a year in fees. Uh, so they, they love the status quo, right? And they've got the big employer groups, they've got the big unions coming out to try and nobble the changes. Um, and, you know, um, the reality is, in answer to your question, which I've actually just forgotten... <laughs> <laughs> to do with paying fines. Yeah, so, in, in, look, in terms of fines, I mean, it should be the same system for everyone. I mean, the workers should not be paying the fines, mm. whether it's a, a, a fund which is owned by a bank or whether it's owned by a union. The people that are the shareholders of that, those funds should be paying for their own regulatory fines. I mean, wh why would the punters, why would the members have to pay for that? Well, the interesting element is that the members have to in some way because, one, is a not-for-profit. They do. They have capital. They stand... They've received... Tens of millions of dollars a year in fees, donations, money uh, for the 30 years this system has been running for, for. They've got more money than you can poke a stick at from this system. So um, they can pay, pay their own fines. They can't pay the fines out of the members' capital. Um, it's against, they it's want against to. the rules. They want to. Um, That's it's what against... they want to do. No, it's against the rules. Um, and the point that you made earlier... So should, um, should is, that be against the rules? Well, it's completely wrong, um, that your point that you made earlier. Um, the reason the government's doing this is that they've got an ideological bent against workers and companies working together on industry funds and managing workers' money. And the fact that they have lower fees and greater performance um, than the retail funds. Over the course of the last 12 months, 800,000 Australians have moved from retail funds into industry funds because they're better performing. Um, and this, this legislation is aimed at trying to nobble uh, industry funds because you and your colleagues have an ideological bent against workers managing their own retirement incomes and doing a better job than the banking sector. That's what this is all about. The best outcomes, right? So if this, if this results in... And more, they get better outcomes, but, but lower fees, better right, returns. Let, let Andrew respond, we're nearly out of time. But if this, re this results in more uh, large industry funds, Fine. As long as you're doing a good job, who cares? I mean, you don't come into Parliament to play sectoral games, right? We just want the whole system to work better for workers. It is, after all, their money. It doesn't belong to the unions or the banks. It's the workers' money. I agree with you on that. And they yeah. are performing all better. Right. Good.